I'm sorry, I'm very sorry that I couldn't be there with all of you tonight. I'm feeling a bit under the weather and I figured you didn't want me to bring my cough and uh, sore throat into a room packed with people, but I'm very excited to see um, that many people in the room and I hope we can continue this great conversation based on the results of the saltwater fishing satisfaction survey. Bear with me. There we go. All right. So the first thing to note is that as we go through the results of the most recent survey that was conducted, you're going to see a pattern where responses from anglers are in green and responses from guides are in blue. Originally, we had the first satisfaction survey conducted in 2017, and it was conducted by Responsive Management, which is a natural resources research company. They specialize in surveys for states relative to fishing and hunting questions with their constituents. We were able to again contract with them five years later for the recent survey that encompassed fishing during 2021. The majority of the questions were the same between the two surveys, and that is very important because it allows us to compare the answers between the two surveys. In terms of the questions that were asked and how anglers were selected, resident anglers were randomly selected from those holding SIP permits, the Saltwater Information Program permit. There's about 230,000 annually. When anglers were randomly selected and offered an invitation to participate, they could do so either by telephone and or online. Very important is that there was an initial screener question. Everybody was asked first, did you participate in saltwater fishing in Georgia during 2021? If they did not participate in saltwater fishing during 2021, that was the end of the survey for them. They were no longer answering questions for the rest of the survey. Far more sample was selected than was needed to provide accurate results. At the end of the process, 2026 completed interviews make up this study. Those completed interviews represent saltwater anglers from 144 of our 159 Georgia counties. And they also, 45% of the interviews represent residents in the 11 coastal counties, that being the six coastal and the next tier in of five uh, near coast counties. Another one of the components that we'll talk a little bit about tonight is breaking the data into two different groups. Obviously, we analyze the data based on responses of all of the anglers that were surveyed. But we also broke down the analysis into two different groups those responses from the coastal residents and non-coastal residents. We also separated and were able to look at the data based on what we call avidity. That's how often somebody fishes. Since we asked all the participating anglers to tell us approximately how many days they participated in red drum fishing in 2021, we were then able to partition the data into what we term an avid angler, one that fishes more than 10 days in a year, and a less avid angler, one that fishes 10 or fewer days in a year. The sampling for the guides was very different. Obviously with over 230,000 licensed saltwater anglers a year in Georgia, we are not able to sample every single angler. That's how the guides are different. It is a much smaller population with only 194 licensed resident saltwater guides. Every single one of them was invited to participate. They were contacted by both email from the company, emails from me, and telephone calls. And they were contacted repeatedly through both of those methods. At the end of the sampling period, 55% had chosen to complete the interviews. I'm gonna do a check here, Tyler, just to make sure that you all can hear me okay. Yep, we can hear you fine. Great, thank you. So one of the questions we obviously get a lot is, was 2026 completed interviews enough? How do you know what's enough? And like I told you on the previous slide, far more anglers were invited to participate to ensure that the minimum sample size was achieved. Quick little couple of points here from the world of statistics. 
the overall population that we needed to survey was those anglers holding a SIP permit. So we can calculate how many surveys, that is the sample size, that we needed to be 95% confident that the responses fall within a specified range of the actual value in the population. That may not sound uh, very clear at the beginning, but we'll go through a couple of examples. People very commonly say things like, I'm 90% certain of something, or I'm 95% certain of something. Well, a 95% confidence is a standard in statistics and in survey responses. So imagine that 100 times random samples of anglers having SIP permits were selected. The results of 95 of those 100 rounds of surveys would fall in a range plus or minus 2%. So going through the rest of the presentation, if I tell you that a satisfaction level reported for a specific question was 64%, then we are 95% confident that the value for the entire population, that is all SIP permit holders resident in the state of Georgia, the value would be between 62% and 66%. That's the 64% plus or minus 2%. Probably breathe a sigh of relief. That's as far down into a statistics lesson as I'm gonna to go tonight. So let's start delving in to some of the questions that were asked in the satisfaction survey. Again, there's a pattern, green for anglers and blue for guides. The green stippled value are the 2017 responses and the solid bars are the 2021 responses. As you can see, and hopefully you can see my mouse here on the screen. There was an increase in fishing inshore, which is rivers and creeks for both the anglers and the guides comparing 2017 to 2021. An opposite pattern was seen for near shore, which are state waters, zero to three miles and offshore, which is federal waters, three to 200 miles offshore. For both the anglers and the guides, in both of those regions of water, there was a decrease in participation in fishing in that area. Please bear in mind that multiple responses were possible. An angler could have said they only fished in one area or an angler could have said they fished in two or three of the areas. Jared spent a pretty good amount of time talking about the MRIP data that is comprised of dockside surveys through Dawn and her crew to determine catch. And then there's also an effort survey that is completed to determine how many trips anglers are participating in in a given time period. You'll see here on the x-axis that the year span is 2009 to 2021. That is the same year coverage and time frame that Jared represented in almost all of his graphics. So we're going to stick to the same time period. A couple of things to note is that nearshore in yellow and offshore in gray are fairly, oops, excuse me, are fairly consistent and are a fraction of the inshore saltwater fishing. That's this green line here. And not only is it a fraction of the effort that's expended in, in those areas fished, but there is a significant trend in increase in inshore fishing in Georgia. A probability value of less than 0 0.05 and even more 0 0.01 is statistically significant. And our probability level is 0 0.00008. So we are seeing a statistically significant increase in fishing pressure as measured by effort in inshore Georgia waters since 2009. Also, I'd like to give you a little bit of background information on the harvest. We divide these data into three fishing modes, anglers fishing from private boat mode, anglers fishing from a charter vessel, and anglers fishing from a shore location. If you look at the last five years to incorporate and look at the average number of fish harvested in each fishing mode, <clears throat> you will see that 94% of the red drum harvest, that is number of fish, is harvested in the private boat mode by anglers fishing from their own private boats only 4% from shore and 2% from charter vessel. That makes sense 
when you realize that for average number of inshore trips, that's these green bars, these areas of inshore fishing trips, we estimate that anglers take on average 1.3 million trips, excuse me, compared to guides, which are almost 21,000 trips. So that's some background MRIP catch and effort data to give us a parameter for this discussion. Back to the satisfaction survey results. Again, anglers in green, guides in blue. We asked them if they typically fished for red drum. For those that indicated that they did not fish for red drum, that was the end of the survey for that section of species. We also asked about spotted sea trout, flounder, and sheep's head. For the purposes of this discussion tonight, however, we're gonna stick just to the red drum data. As you can see, anglers were fairly consistent in the percent of time that they fished for red drum. There was also a slight increase in their reporting to us the average number of days that they fished for red drum in the last 12 months during 2021. The story was a little bit different for the guides. You can see an almost 10% increase in their response for whether they typically fish for red drum. And they also had an almost two week increase on average in the number of days that they took clients fishing for red drum. There is a lot of data on this slide and I'm going to walk you through it. But there are some overall like 30,000 foot level points that I wanted to make sure that you were able to see all on one slide. And also at the end of this presentation, you'll get a one page summary that has these graphics on it as well to take with you. We asked anglers and guides, are you satisfied or dissatisfied with red drum fishing? We asked that question for four different categories, red drum fishing in general, the number of red drum caught, the average size of red drum caught, and their satisfaction or dissatisfaction with current regulations. So the anglers here in green, the yellow represents dissatisfied and the stripes represent <clears throat> no preference. So as you can see across all four of the satisfaction questions, there is decreased satisfaction among anglers for all four criteria. If you take the difference between this value, this value, this value, and this value and average it, that's where you get that decrease of 10% of the anglers that are less satisfied with red drum fishing in 2021 compared to 2017. If you do the same comparison over here on the right for the same responses to questions on the guides, the decrease in satisfaction is even more pronounced. Again, fishing in general for red drum, number of red drum caught, average size of red drum caught, and current regulations. Something interesting and not unexpected is that the number of captains that had no preference for their satisfaction level was much smaller than when that question was asked of anglers. Again, if you take the average of each of these categories, you see that the, across the board, there was on average a 21% decrease in satisfaction level among guides fishing for red drum. So we're gonna delve a little bit more next into the regulations, questions about the regulations. For those people that said that they, anglers and guides, were not satisfied with current regulations, we asked an open-ended question about what would make them more satisfied. We literally asked them to give us a few words as a response that would make them more satisfied with current regulations. It's hard to summarize open-ended questions, but again, the 30,000 foot view of this response is that the top two responses for both anglers and guides would be a decrease in bag limit and an increase in size. So again, these were anglers and guides that were not satisfied with current regulations. Remember on the first or second slide, I told you about our ability to partition the data into two different pieces, coastal and non-coastal, and avid and less avid. We did this because we often hear from anglers and guides that they think that people that reside on the coast may fish differently than people who are coming from non-coastal counties in Georgia. We also hear that people feel that anglers and guides that are more avid spend more of their time and more days a year fishing 
may respond differently or fish differently than those, than those who fish less frequently. So what you see is looking first at this coastal partition in the data, there are no percentages listed under red drum fishing in general, number of red drum and size of red drum. That's because there was not a statistically significant difference in their responses. Their responses were less than that 4% total range that I told you about, which means that from a statistical point of view, there is no difference in the satisfaction levels for coastal and non-coastal anglers in those three categories. The only category in which there was a statistically significant difference was their satisfaction with red drum regulations. More coastal anglers are dissatisfied at 25% than non-coastal anglers in the regulations. Looking at a similar pattern for the avidity, you can see that three of the categories have a statistically significant difference in the responses and therefore dissatisfaction between avid anglers and less avid anglers. More of the avid anglers are dissatisfied with red drum fishing in general, size, and current regulations. We also asked anglers and guides, what would you like the slot size and bag limit size to be? There were a lot of responses, and again, it's somewhat difficult to summarize this at the 30,000 foot view, but I'm gonna take a stab at it. In 2017, only 15% of the anglers said that they would support a bag limit reduction to less than five fish. By 2021, that percent of responses had doubled and 30% of the anglers support a bag limit of fewer than five fish. Again, interestingly for the guides, they were very consistent in their responses, 68% on the nose, both years the surveys were conducted. We also asked if the anglers and guides would support a slot size limit change. Anglers and guides supported an increase of maximum size limit, but the answer was not as clear for anglers. Excuse me, the answer was not as clear relative to supporting an increase of minimum size. So the guides had a more clear response that they supported an increase in the minimum size limit. <clears throat> Excuse me. A new question for 2017 was whether the anglers and guides would support or oppose a vessel limit. You can see in that graphic that 20%, which is in yellow, only 20% of the anglers indicated they would oppose a vessel limit. And a smaller number at 13% of the guides indicated that they would oppose a vessel limit. What would potentially a vessel limit look like, however, relative to the trips that we know that people are taking right now. We call this a vessel limit analysis, where we look at the total number of fish across all of the trips that are harvested and estimate how large a reduction you would see with various combinations of a vessel limit. So you can see here to the right that obviously something is going on and you would have a larger reduction in expected harvest at 10 or five fish. So, we then looked into the data a little bit more in a more detailed fashion. And instead of having just increments of five, now we had from five to 10 fish. What this tells you is that we would expect based on fishing and harvest on trips over the time period of 2009 to 2021, that if a 10 fish vessel limit was imposed, that it would reduce harvest by 2%. On the other end, if a five fish vessel limit was imposed, we predict it would be a reduction of harvest of 15%. So here we are at our first action. There are going to be five actions that I am presenting to you with various options included. As soon as my presentation is done, the staff will pass out the comment sheet and all of these questions will be listed on the comment sheet for you to select an option and provide us with written comments. The comment sheet is also available. Jared had the web address at the end of his presentation and I've got it at the end of my presentation and it is also listed at the bottom of the comment sheet you will get. So if you would rather think about it or submit your answers uh, electronically, you'll be able to do so at the website that we're gonna give you. 
So what would a reduction in the angler bag limit look like if one was pursued? Again, you see a negative number because it's the reduction estimated in harvest. So for 2009 to 2021, those trips indicate to us based on the harvest obtained during the, that time that a reduction to a four fish angler bag would reduce harvest by an estimated 5%. And then you can see the values for three, two, and one fish with an angler bag limit of one fish expected to reduce red drum harvest by 43%. This graphic here on the bottom, the bars to the right are the same values as what you see in the table on top. What's different is we're often asked for the seasonal impact of harvest because we all know there are more trips in the fall for um, seeking to harvest red drum and more red drum are in fact harvested during the fall. So you can see that since the majority of the harvest is in two fish and one fish, that the seasonal impact is going to be larger for those potential reductions in angler bag limit. And we come to action number two that we're gonna ask you for your feedback on. Should the bag limit be decreased? One question that was not asked in the satisfaction survey but it has come up as a topic of conversation, is whether people would support or oppose no bag limit for charter captains and crew. The question came up during FinFish AP meetings with CRD staff. The comments have been made during previous meetings from additional charter captains that are not on the FinFish AP. And also we see that Florida has proposed in May of this year, a statewide change such that captain and crew are prohibited from retaining the bag limit. So action three on the comment sheet is going to be asking for your feedback of whether captains and mates should retain a bag limit, should continue to retain a bag limit. During the survey, we gave anglers and guides six slot size limits and asked them out of those choices, what would they like the slot size limit to be? There was one change from 2017 to 2021, and that was the addition of a category for other. That's why you see not applicable among the 2017 responses, but you see that, for instance, the guide's number one ranked selection was to select a slot size limit other than the six initially presented. For the anglers, their responses were fairly consistent from 2017 to 2021. Back in 2017, the highest ranked choice was 14 to 25 inches. The second highest ranked choice was the current regulations of 14 to 23. In 2021, you'll see that two choices were ranked evenly, they tied. Therefore, there's not a rank of two, and that is indicated by the asterisk. The guide's responses varied between the years. And you can see that initially their number one response was 15 to 23, but in 2021, they gave options for other slot size limits than the six presented. The second highest ranked was 15 to 25 inches. The third highest ranked response was the current regulations. <clears throat> Action four will be, should the slot size limit be changed? Option A would be status quo, option B would be yes, and we'll ask you to please give us a comment on what you think that slot size limit should be. This table to the right is given to you as an example of what various slot size limits and bag limit combinations do in terms of achieving our management goals. The last time a stock assessment was done, which required a change in regulations by the South Atlantic states for red drum was in 2002. The two more recent stock assessments did not require a change in regulations by the states for the regional management. And remember that we're underway with another stock assessment right now. So these data are very dated being from 2002. And we expect that these percentages would have changed by now. The only reason I'm including them is to give you that example on what changes as you have various combinations. Our management goal 
is to have a 40% or greater spawning potential ratio. That's the SPR. When this analysis was done, those bag and slot size limit combinations that did not achieve the 40% SPR were not available to the states to consider. So you can see how with all of these combinations above 40%, you can see how at the time in 2002, 14 to 23 with a bag of five was an acceptable combination. You'll also see that as you increase the upper size limit, in this example, it was only by one inch, that has pretty significant implications on the acceptable bag that you can use going forward. Only one or two fish had the selection been made for the higher slot size limit, slot size limit, sorry. Also wanted to point out to you that when you increase the lower size from 14 to 15, it makes very little difference in the percentage of the SPR, which again is our management goal for the region. You can see that at 15 to 23, it was acceptable and achieved 40% SPR for five fish. But same story is over here. If you raised the upper slot limit by an inch, only one or two fish in the bag would have been acceptable at that time. For the stock assessment that is currently ongoing that Jared mentioned, we have asked for a terms of reference to be completed and have this table updated so that we have information moving forward that is much more updated and relevant to now. And we'll be getting that information in the future when that stock assessment is completed. And finally, the last is, would you support or oppose a season for Red Drum? We got a resounding opposition to this question from both anglers and guides with about 55% of anglers and about 60% of guides across both year spans. But we also wanted to ask you your opinions since you are attending these town hall meetings. So the last question is, should there be a Red Drum season? And again, option B, if you think there should, please tell us what season you think should be considered. You can see here for reference, the regulations in the other South Atlantic states, and in particular, this 2022 change for captain, no captain and crew bag limit, and also to reduce the vessel limit to four, down from eight to four. And that's for the Northeast Florida region. So here we are with the next steps. We presented the results of Jared's Red Drum summary of the research that we currently have to the FinFish Advisory Panel on June 1st, as well as the results of the satisfaction survey. We're here at our town hall. Here's the web address where you can submit your comments electronically. If we make the decision to make a possible regulatory recommendation to the board, that would happen in August. And by the board, I mean the Georgia DNR board. The Georgia DNR board has authority for red drum regulations. We would then go back out to official public hearing and comments in September. And were we to make a final recommendation to the DNR board for a possible rule action that would occur in October with the January 2023 implementation. I hope you guys are all still there and I will be delighted to Thank you.